covered. Hello, Vernon. I do apologise. I just had the phone inside its case in my bag, and I just didn't hear it ringing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, anyway, it's nice to hear from you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Uh, keeping OK, yes. Keeping OK. Uh, I've got trouble with the leg, um, so um, I'm getting physiotherapy from the leg now, and I've, been, I've joined a gym to sort of aid the, aid, you know, strengthen the muscles in the leg, so... I'm doing that three oh. times a week now, which is quite tiring. Oh, well, it is still good, though, to do that. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry that it's giving you a hard time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Getting old. <laughs> yes, I know what that's like. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I was uh, I was doing a bit of uh, reading and research on, on the soul again. Mm-hmm, Okay. And uh, I was wondering if you had, if you had done some more research as well uh, on the soul. Um, I have. I've also been looking um, on JW.org at some of the the watchtowers. I've been doing searches. Hmm. Um, I'm quite shocked at what I found. Um, if I could just quote briefly one one or two things, the Watchtower, 15th of June, 2014, page 7, talks about, quote, no part of their former physical body accompanies them to heaven. This is talking of the anointed. So it says that when the anointed get resurrected, it's really a recreation because for, from various quotes, it seems that not only is Jesus made out to be an angel or a, or a spirit creature called an angel, but the anointed also become similar to him. The, 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 the verse 1 John 3, 2 is quoted repeatedly, for we will be like him, for we shall see him as he, as he is. I did a, basically a search on that verse in various watchtowers, and it seems to imply that not only does Jesus become an angel, but the anointed become an angel too. So the new covenant is actually a covenant between angels, between Christ and 144,000. I was a bit shocked. Hmm. Well, it's, it's correct, yes. I think First Corinthians 15 as well probably featured heavily there as well. And, um, the, the, you know, the, the reason we can understand that is because of a proper appreciation of words like soul and spirit. That's basically why I started us on what must seem like a little bit of a, a very basic entry point into the discussion. But there's a, there's a good strong reason for that, Robert. The word soul, as used in the scriptures, is very different from the common English understanding of the word soul. I, I, I realise it has it has a range of meaning, both in the Greek yes. and in the Hebrew. Yes, the problem is a lot of that range comes from philosophy and pagan religion, which is a problem because what we want to get is the scriptural viewpoint on these words. It's a. Uh, I found an interesting quote that I was just having a look at mm -hmm. when it speaks about um, the soul. It has, uh, it has this joke. Let me see. Um, it's taken from the Jewish Publication Society of America, where they issued a new translation of the Torah, the, the, the first five books of the Bible. The editor in chief. Mr. H. M. Orlinsky of the Hebrew Union College stated that the word soul had been virtually eliminated from their translation because, and it quotes, the Hebrew word in question here is nefesh. And he added, other translators have interpreted to mean soul, which is completely inaccurate. <clears throat> the Bible does not say that we have a soul. Nefesh is the person himself need for food, the very blood in his veins, his being. It was a, a quote taken out of the New York Times in 1962. The point being there, that the word nefesh, which is what is commonly translated as soul in the scriptures, this Hebrew scholar didn't want to translate as soul because the common understanding of the English word soul is wrong for what nefesh is. In other words, translating 
near flesh into soul today is actually an incorrect translation. Because what people think soul means, and what the original Hebrew word nefesh means, is completely different. It's an interesting point that's being brought out there, but the, the point behind it is that in the scriptures, the word soul is very consistent. Its range of meanings is very, very small and limited. And outside of the scriptures, in philosophy and in pagan religions, that range has been extended to mean something which the scriptures don't say. Do you follow what I'm saying? I follow, I follow what you're saying. Um, I certainly don't um, agree with it at all. Um, I've never heard of this Jewish scholar. Which watchtower is he quoted in? Where Could you give me the reference in the watchtower so I could look up? Uh, that one was taken from the New York Times. Oh, the New, New York, York Times. Times, okay. Of October the 12th, 1962. Okay. In that New York Times, it was quoting, uh, his name is H.M. Orlinsky. If it's back in 1962, this is obviously someone a little while ago. Yeah before my time, but um, the point being that the understanding that we have today of soul and the understanding they had when the scriptures were being written is very different. That understanding that we have of soul has been influenced by pagan beliefs. Well, yes, pagan for, yes for, most, for most Jews today it is. It's influenced by the Talmud. <laughs> so, yeah. so whatever is said in the New Testament about the nature of God and the resurrection, but particularly the nature of God, the, the Talmud would take a, a different position to the, 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 the nature of God. And that's the, the present basis of Talmudic Judaism. It's not based in the Bible at all. It's based in the Talmud. Um, now, I don't know who this Jew is. I, I, I don't, I've never heard of the gentleman before. But um, I would suspect that he's probably somebody who is a Talmudic Jew. He follows the Talmud, and he lets the Talmud interpret the Old Testament for him. And I would have um, very little, very little trust in somebody like that. Um, I think we ought to this go to not, the. Uh, this is not Talmud based, but rather he was doing the translation of the Bible. But that's just one quotation that highlights to us what the meaning of the word in the Bible is used as. When we study the Bible itself and we look at all of the scriptural references, I mentioned last time we discussed yes. how many different scriptural references there were in, in both the Greek and the Hebrew. Yes. And when we have a look specifically at how the word soul is used. It, it has a range used. of meanings in both the Greek and Hebrew. Uh, it is always used in one of three ways. The creature, the person, or the life. Or a part of a human being that's separate from the physical no, body. For instance, that is purely Greek philosophy and has nothing to do with the scriptures. That's, what, that's the basis of the teaching of the Pharisees. The Sadducees denied the existence of the soul or spirit. I understand that Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Sadducees in that. The Pharisees believed in a soul or spirit. At Judaism in the time of Christ, there wasn't agreement on the nature of a human being. The Sadducees said, we're just a, a body of flesh and bones. When we die, that's it, we cease to exist. There's no resurrection, that's the Sadducee position. The Pharisees took a different position. They had different understanding of the word soul and spirit. And they would say that there were two parts to a person's nature. Um, firstly, the physical body. Secondly, there is a part of a human being that is not just the life force. There's actually um, an actual aspect of that human being. Today, we would say it's more than four dimensions because modern physics talks in terms of um, there being more than four dimensions. And that's all the spirit world is. So the teaching of the Pharisees was different to the teaching of the Sadducees. There wasn't agreement at the time of Christ in this. Now, Jesus saved Paul on the... Let me, let me just finish, Vernon. Yeah. Jesus saved Paul on the Damascus Road. When Paul wrote his epistles, 
Paul never said, the first thing I want to tell you, Romans, in this epistle to you, is do not believe in the immortal soul. It's a pagan belief. It comes from Greek philosophy. Don't believe it. No, Paul assumed the position of the Pharisees in his writings, as do the other apostles. For instance, John, remember we talked about soul being used in the genitive in Revelation 20, verse 4, and Revelation chapter 6, 9 and 10. I saw underneath the altar, this is Revelation 6, 9 and 10, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God. And then it says, they cry out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, would thou refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So you have souls of those. It's a genitive. It's not the soul being used in one of its f functions as a whole person, like you could say of an old lady, she's a dear old soul. Here, soul is distinguished from the person because the person has been slain. They've been killed. And yet souls of those is distinguished from the person. The same in Revelation 20 verse 4, where souls who've been martyred for the faith, they've been beheaded, they're reigning with Christ. Sorry, Robert. I'm, I'm trying to keep a, tr a record of everything I'm going to respond to yeah. in, in my head there. Yes. But there's about four things to respond to. First of all, okay. the Sadducees believe wasn't it didn't have anything to do with an immortal ghost-like part of the human being. The Sadducees believed that there was no resurrection. That once you lived and died, that was it. That's what the Sadducees believed. They, Secondly, no, 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 the Sadducees believed. No, the Sadducees believed when you died, you died because you had no immortal spirit or soul. They believed that mankind was one part, a physical body of flesh, and that's all we were. We had no soul or spirit that was joined to our physical body. So at death, when you died, your physical body stopped functioning, you ceased to exist, because that's all you were. Now, Jesus in Luke 20 speaks well, to the Sadducees. There's, there's four things I want to respond to there. So okay. that, that's the first part. We, we can discuss, you know, the disagreement there about the Sadducees' belief in the mind. But the second thing is that Jehovah's Witnesses don't agree with the Sadducees' belief that there is no resurrection, because we do believe in the resurrection. You believe in a recreation, not a resurrection. A recreation, a recreation is different from a resurrection. You believe that in Jehovah's that's, mind, that's true. in that's Jehovah's correct, mind, yes. he's like a computer program. He he remembers people, and he will recreate people from the the image he has in his mind. It's rather like having a floppy disk or a cassette tape. You put a cassette tape into a cassette tape copier 20 years ago, you put a blank tape in, you press the record button, and you have a copy, an almost perfect copy, of that cassette tape. Or you put a floppy disk into a computer, you put another floppy disk in, you can copy from one floppy disk to the, to the other in the computer. That's not no. a resurrection, because a resurrection is the, is, is the rising up of the physical human body that was dead, and in the resurrection, that, one. And, 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 and in a resurrection, that body is given life again, and it's reunited with the soul or spirit. So, the word resurrection to me, and the word recreation to you, that's what I understand the word resurrection to mean, but with a, a slight variation to what you've just said. But I, I'll, I, won't, I won't go into yeah, that sure, just yet. Sure, sure. The fourth one was again what the Apostle Paul was speaking about when he was refuting the Sadducees' belief that there was no resurrection. We can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He was speaking about their belief, and in fact, I think I've got it nearby here. Yeah, sure. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15... You're not thinking of verse 44, are you? There is a natural body, there is a spiritual body. Oh, hey, it is so in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Earlier. I think it starts from about 25-ish, but let me just... Yeah, sorry, sure. I opened... Uh, no, that, that, that's okay. Vernon, would it be possible for us just to... If you wish to discuss this now, 
would it be possible to discuss this one thing now? I can talk later this evening, or I can talk over the weekend if you want, but I can really only speak for about 10, 15 minutes more at the moment, at the absolute maximum. Cause that... Me too, me too. Yeah, let's, sure, let's, sure. let's just discuss this one scripture briefly. Okay, I'll listen to what you say, yeah. Sure. Basically, what it's discussing here, as we can see already from uh, verse um, 26, where he begins his discussion that death is going to be brought to nothing. The apostle here continues to explain in a bit more detail how that's the case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we see as well in verse, from about verse 31, him being very specific against the Sadducees' belief that there is no resurrection. If the dead are not to be raised up, in verse 32, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we are to die. The idea of people not being raised up, which is mentioned a few times there in 1 Corinthians 15, was the yeah. belief that the Sadducees had. They believed in no resurrection. Yeah. Now, the point being that you live, you die, and that's it. So basically, what you did in your life didn't really matter that much because at the end you die anyway, yeah. and that's the end. Yes. So the Apostle Paul was making that point in 32. So they didn't believe in any recreation, resurrection, or anything afterwards. Yeah. As for the verse 44 that you were mentioning further down, I don't know if you've had a look at an interlinear to see what words are being used in verse 44. Yes. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Spiritual is not spirit, pneuma. It's plumatikos. It's a different Greek word, and it means spirit dominated. It does not mean a body made of spirit. Uh, the word body is soma, and I, I'm not, obviously not a Greek scholar, but from the limited understanding that I have, whenever body is used with referred re reference to the resurrection, such as here, soma body it always refers to a physical body so what is being raised here is a physical body that is spirit dominated me, it is not a new body made of spirit otherwise it would, me, otherwise pneuma let, would have been used instead of plumaticos let me explain why that's not quite correct robert yeah if yeah. you have a look at the word natural body yep yeah. The word being used there to describe natural is actually the word soul. In other words, it's saying it is sown a soulical body, and it is raised a spiritual body. In other words, to say that is it's raised a body of soul, sorry, sown a body of soul and raised the body of spirit. No, it's not. It doesn't. It says, yes, the it, word is soulical. It can't because. It is raised a spiritual body, spiritual is plumaticos, and body, soma, always refers to a physical body of flesh. So it is raised a body of flesh, the same body that dies, that is the same body that is risen, and yet it is a spiritual, meaning spirit-dominated. Well, I've heard this, this discussion before, and it's, I, I'm sorry to say, but it's, it's not right. Because that's not what the what the words here are saying. Well, Vernon, the soul and the spirit are being discussed here as the two parts. One is the spiritual dimension, and the one is the physical dimension. If you have a look at all of the uh, other descriptions in other translations, mm -hmm. the Byington, for example, translates the word translates the words soulical as animal. Uh, the American Standard is natural, and the King James as well as natural. The uh, New World Translation is physical. Yeah, the Your Living Bible soul. here, the Living Bible here says, they are just human bodies at death. But but when bodies come back to life, there will be superhuman bodies. It's a pretty poor translation, the Living Bible. But this is a dual Bible, King James and Living. Now there are many people who try and teach a certain teaching and try and make the scripture fit that teaching. If I put teaching aside and I simply look at what the Bible is teaching here instead, the Apostle Paul is describing two different things, what is physical and what is spiritual. He even uses the word dust to describe 
describe the first atom. The first atom came from the dust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the last atom came from heaven. Mm -hmm. The first atom became a living soul. The last atom became a life-giving spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again and again, his contrast here is between what is physical and living in the physical realm and what is spiritual and existing in the spiritual Spiritual realm. is plumaticos, it's not spirit. It doesn't mean made up out of spirit. That's pneuma, and that's not used here. Verse 44 and the subsequent verses, it is raised a spiritual body. Body is soma, it refers always to a human body when it's used in the context of the um, human being's resurrection. Spiritual is plumaticos, not pneuma, spirit. And it simply means spirit dominated because it's talking about the glorification of the human body. But I'm not trying to avoid you, but could we wrap this up quickly? And I will speak to you again. I'm, I'm sorry I missed, missed your call earlier. Would it be convenient to speak this evening or at some time over the weekend? Or if you just text me and give me a time, I will keep the phone by me next time so I hear it ringing. Um, OK, I will have to... Um, yeah, perhaps... Perhaps tonight or tomorrow, but I'll, I'll, I'll send you a text. But yeah, family, okay. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know. Do you want to wrap it up quickly? I do, I do have to go, but you, you, you wrap it up. But, what yeah, do you want me to look at but, for our next discussion? Simply, the point of this whole initial discussion mm -hmm. is to hopefully set a foundation where we can agree on the meaning of the word soul as used in the scriptures. Yeah. Basically, if we can't come to an agreement on that one single word, it's going to make any other discussion in the scriptures fairly impossible. Because after that comes the spirit, and after that comes resurrection. And to understand, you know, the deeper things in the scriptures, we need to know exactly what those three words mean. Yeah. They, that's, they, that's basically yes. it. Yeah. They, a soul, and spirit, soul and spirit has a range of meaning. You say you want to understand the meaning of the word soul, but the word soul is not used in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm looking at verse 42 to, to the end of the chapter. I, I can't see it here at all. It's not used. Nor is the word... It's used... Um, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, 45. yeah, 45. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. In verse 44 as well. Well, I said 44, but remember it's got a... It's got a... What do you call it? A prefix suffix at the end? Where it's not just soul, it's solical. It's of soul. So it's a body of soul. No, it's not. It's, yeah. It is raised a plumaticos, spiritual, that means spirit dominated. But, it is not. But, and body. Look at the first part, the first part, the natural body. It is sown a natural body, physical. it is raised a spiritual body, yeah. yeah. Yes. So the first part is, is another English way to say it's solical, although that's not really an English word we use very often. Yeah. Would you give me time and we talk about this some other time? Yeah, sure. And I, 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 will, I, will, I will look at this in more depth because I have not um, researched what natural body means, but I'm quite certain I have looked in the past. It is raised a spiritual body. Uh, I've looked at that before. But I will, I will look at the whole, the, whole, the whole verse and its surrounding context. And I apologise about soul because you're quite right, is used in verse 45. I stand corrected there. No problem. And, and 44, twice and 44, but it's, a, but it's got a uh, suffix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we'll speak again another time. All right. Th thank you, Vernon. Sorry I missed your call earlier. Bye. No problem.